So I skipped my live broadcast yesterday, so I'm doing a quick live today where I'm going to answer a question, and then I'll do the Q&A segment for you guys. So if you're watching this uh, after the live broadcast, give me about 30 seconds. I'm waiting for people to join the live broadcast, and then I'll jump into it. Or you can just skip ahead, probably about a minute so we'll see if anybody shows up. There we go. People are showing up. Oleg has appeared. Hey, how you doing? I hope everything is well. I got my scarf on because I got the window open and I'm airing out the place. All right. I'm just waiting for people to join in. And then we'll jump into the subject and then we'll do Q&A. This is going to be more or less a Q&A episode. Just see how many people get in. Good morning, Satera. Did I pronounce that properly? Setera. I think I pronounced that properly. Let me know before the, all the chats come in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where in Canada are you from? I am from Montreal, Canada, which is the uh, east side, the French part of Canada. Where are you from, Setera? Uh, you just bought my book. Thank you, Tuan Tran. Van Bram Vancouver. Oh, Vancouver. Very cool. Very cool. Weather must be nice out there this time of year, I would imagine. Very cool. Hey guys, how are you? Hi, Aisha. Hi, everybody. Yeah, let me know where you guys are from. Is this live? We're going live. We're live. We're going live. That's a joke. Uh, you, you may know what I'm talking about here. I am doing very good. The weather, uh, weather sucks. Uh, we're ha we have sun here, but it's quite cold still in Montreal. Uh, two we got here. Johnny Bravo. Hey, Steph. Just got done watching your last live broadcast recording. Definitely enjoy the article review plus Q&A format. Yeah, I plan on doing more and more of that. I think um, as we go, good night in Germany. Oh, man. Love the beer in Germany. Yeah. Hello. Good morning from Brazil. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah, just love them. You know, when you pop in, I'm just curious to see where everybody is from. I find that it's, it's very international, which is fantastic. I like to get perspective from people from all over the world. Um, yeah, I'm from Italy, living in Romania. Huh, very cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ishwar. Uh, glad. Thank you, and I'm glad I could help. So how many people are we up to now? We're up to 50 people. That's okay. Uh, welcome you from India. Fantastic. Raj Kumar. Uh, how do you find a remote job? Uh, you go online. You build up your website. We've talked about. It. I gotta have to put that in. Um, I'm gonna have to come up with a series of videos to answer a common question FAQ video format, and so that you guys can refer to that. You just had snow. Oh, that's no good. Yeah, we actually had snow a couple of days ago, but it melted away. Thank heavens. Gene, hello, Steph. Do you still want to move to California? It's warmer there. I wanted to, I wanted to. I have relatives there, and um, eh, I'm less less enthusiastic because of the homeless problems there. And I love California, though. Um, my uh, family is in uh, Southern California, in Altadena, which is right near Pasadena, right side of right outside of uh, Hollywood, kind of uh, extended part of Los Angeles. I was actually thinking of moving to old Pasadena. My, uh, I guess my great aunt, I guess you would call her, she runs the Pasadena, well, she's one of the persons who runs the Pasadena Playhouse. Very cool. Lots of history. Hello from Serbia, California. Love Carol. I like Malibu a lot, too. I keep going to the seafood restaurants uh, by the water. Lots of fun. How, how do you be consistent? You do a little every day. You build up. Don't make the mistake of starting off by trying to do eight hours a day. Uh, if it's you start off 20 minutes a day, half an hour a day, an hour a day, and slowly build up, take breaks, you know, consistency is about being consistent, but not giving yourself any breaks. I am Japanese. I enjoy this session. Are you from Japan right now? Are you watching this from Japan? I think you'd be the first. If I'm curious, let me know. I don't know what your name is because I do not read the Japanese characters. Uh, tell me about data science. Don't know much about it. I'm not a data scientist. Sorry. Uh, how do you be consistent in web development? Same way you're consistent in everything else. I just said 
Uh, how essential do you think it is for a freelance developer to learn Docker, Kubernetes, and other dev app skills? Less, less so, less so, because a lot of small businesses won't even think about using these things. Uh, a lot of these technologies are become more useful as your team grows or you're in a large organization or the project itself is more complex. This is one of the things I would say, you learn the basics of good DevOps, the ba very basics what GitHub is and why you'd want to use a repo. And you could use it for backup purposes, uh, for rolling back mistakes in your code base. Um, but it becomes much more useful, of course, if you have multiple people working on the same team, so you can all collaborate, etc. cetera. Um, but for freelance, not super important. I would consider it a secondary tertiary skill set. Um, What's this? Steph, what's your opinion on dopamine and learning to code? Ooh, uh, can you elaborate on what you mean by that? Um, uh, from Egypt, I enjoy this session as well. Fantastic, Egypt, cool. That's a place I like to visit. Milos says, hello everyone. Everybody say hello to Milos. Hi from Morocco. That's another place I want to visit. There's so many places I want to visit. Mm. Singapore, it's another place I want to visit. I hear very good things about Singapore, like the, perhaps the best well-run city in the world. You know? uh, Stefan, how much CSS do you need to know before moving to JavaScript? As a newbie, it's a bit knowing when to learn JavaScript. Um, it's a bit hard knowing. You just gotta learn the, the basic concepts of CSS, uh, positioning, um, all the selector uh, types that you have. Um, uh, the box model, that sort of stuff, just the basic stuff, you know. Uh, do my studio web course and you'll learn all about that. How do you pronounce my name? I would pronounce it Mikael Mansour. I don't know, is that correct? Let me know. Uh, Strasbourg. Strasbourg, France. Ah, bonjour, bonjour, Idir Imoun. I don't know if I pronounced that properly. Visit Syria. I would like to, yeah, at some point. I'm a teacher with MS degree with math. I applied to MS degree about tech. It is free and cost in cost here in Finland. Yeah, that's fantastic. If it's free, take it. Uh, how much can one earn as a developer? Once you get off the ground, much more than most jobs, just about. And I think you'd make as developer, you get you will make more money than any other profession given the level of education that is required and certification. It kicks that way. Uh, yes, yeah, Stefan Mischuk, have you ever made a video considering automatic QA using JavaScript in particular? What do you mean by automation QA? What's automation QA? What does QA stand for? Uh, I've never done a video on that since I'm not sure what you're talking about. So, all right, here we go. Is it true that companies don't want to keep you after 40 even if you were coding from the 20s? Um, I don't know, it depends on the company. I have friends of mine who are coding uh, much older than that. So, you know, if not, there's so much demand, just move into another one. Stefan, are you a human or person? <laughs> Let's see what uh, this guy says. Currently, I know HTML, CSS, trying to move into backend with PHP. Good move. The more, if you want to work for small, medium-sized companies are freelance. You want a broad set of skills. You want to be less specialized, more a generalist programmer. I should do a video on that. Uh, why? Because it maximizes your chance of getting jobs without a doubt. Okay, how much recovery time do you need after burnout? I'm recovering two months. It still don't feel ready to go back to coding. How much time does this last? It really depends on how burnt out you were. It depends on, uh, so how long you're a workaholic, I guess. Uh, it depends on how much time and effort you put into really relaxing, like totally, totally chilling out, like hard exercise will help you with that. Eating really good food, eating well, drinking lots of water, believe it or not, that helps. And, uh, you know, maybe meditation, uh, long swims, walk in nature. You want to really get away from screens. And the more you can do that, the quicker you're going to recover. Why you don't talk about the title of the video? You know what? Good point. I'm going to talk about the title of the video right now. Let's jump into it. I just got caught up with all these questions. All right, 117 people. Let's jump into 
the uh, title of the video, and then we'll go back to the Q&A, okay? Good point. Here we go. So I got this email a while back for somebody. I blocked out their name because if you send me a private question and if I decide to use it publicly, I will not... Uh, I will not display your name publicly, you know, uh, because, uh, you know, for obvious reasons. So let me just read this, and then I'll answer the question. For a lot of you, this will be too basic, but for some people watching, it'll be interesting. So here we go. Steph, I hope you are doing great. I'm almost done going through your interactor, interactive web developer course, and it's great. Lots of great stuff uh, to learn, uh, and priceless tips that could take a long time to learn in the wild. Yeah, I put a lot of uh, details in there. I have worked with WordPress before for about three years already, and I've built about a dozen live websites, some commercial, some personal. However, uh, my next venture, I am trying to move past WordPress and publish with only HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So my question is, is there anything else that's necessary? Let me just mute the, the, the drops here. Okay. My question is, is there anything else necessary for working safe website. I know that technically only an index HTML file with proper meta tags is really necessary, but what is what about security, performance, SEO, and so on? WordPress has countless plugins with help to help with these aspects, and I would assume that there's more code under the hood included in WordPress to make sure the website works properly. Is a vanilla HTML plus CSS plus JS website loaded on a server really all it takes? Thanks and best regards. So let me just jump into my answer here. I'm going to have to minimize this so you guys can see it. Hold on. Uh, so it's down here. Uh, congrats on finishing the course. If the website, I write back to her, is the website is just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript? If it's, it is safe almost by default. Websites become less safe when you turn them into web apps, meaning you have, you, which means you have some programming behind them where you are interacting with the server in some meaningful way with Python, JavaScript, Node, Java, PHP, .NET, et cetera. You don't want to use Ruby. Just write clean, simple, modular code, and you should be fine. So let me expand upon that a little bit. So for a lot of you guys, you know the answer to this, but I just wanted to... Uh, uh, I just wanted to answer this person's question. I got a whole, tons of questions that I just never get around to answering. So, um, yeah, in terms of security, as I, I think I answered that, you know, it, it, when you have a static website, which is just HTML pages, no programming behind them, just HTML, CSS, uh, maybe a little bit of JavaScript, uh, the security is almost built in. Where the security is, is not in the pages, and the site is in the server configuration. So good a shared hosting program, good VPS, virtual private server. They should take care of all the security, locking down all the ports, et cetera. Um, so unless you start getting into programming with backend server technology, as I mentioned, then you're pretty good there. Now, in terms of SEO and so forth, um, if you build your sites in a modern way, they are almost by default SEO. They're almost, you know, in the old days, we used to have to hire a search engine optimizer. These were people who would go into your poorly coded websites and and fix the code so that they were more friendly, so that search engines could actually read what your site was about. And they had meta tags and other things, but that became much less important. It was all about paragraphs of text in there, how you tagged your images, and how you structure things so that in terms of code so that the search engine could navigate your site and extract content out of it. There's a bunch of other factors as well. Links pointing to your site, later on uh, social media presence with regards to your site, you know, how many people are talking about your site on Facebook or wherever, Instagram. This all played a role. So if you build a site, number one, with modern technique, it's by default SEO'd in terms of code structure. Why? Because modern day coding websites is SEO friendly by default. Number two, search engines are far more sophisticated than they used to be, so that they're able to uh, filter through your sites much more effectively than they could before. And uh, what's the other point? The other point, uh, there's some minor optimizations, optimization in terms of speed and that kind of stuff you can do, but it, it goes broader beyond just the code. So, uh, yeah, so there you go. That's in a nutshell, you know, when you're dealing with SEO and uh, web marketing, there's a lot more outside of the actual code that you write. The content itself has to be written in such a way that it has the proper keywords and so on. 
that people might be looking for. So you can do things like uh, do searches on Google to see what keywords people are actually looking for and then create content in your own site with those keywords so that you get that traffic. And it gets much more complex than that. I could do a whole course on on uh, web marketing optimization and so on. But there you go. Uh, WordPress has a bunch of plugins. Be, you know, yeah, it depends because of the structure of the app. I would have to look at the plugins, what they're doing specifically. They make low keywords in your titles, your title elements, for example, whereas by default WordPress might not. But I think the modern WordPress especially is better at that than it used to be. So um, there you go. That's it for that. So let me just go back into some questions. I hope that was useful for you guys. Give me a bunch of thumbs up if you like that summary. We have 134 people and only 24 thumbs up, which I give you guys a thumbs down for that. So give me some thumbs up. Um, I have to do it because it's a WordPress game. Let's see. I had an interesting question here. Aisha says, have WordPress sites now. Should I recreate it without WordPress or should I leave it? It is an insane amount of work converting this. Now, nah, just leave it. WordPress is fine. I created my own uh, blogging uh, tool years ago where we created it with Laravel. But now we just use WordPress on all our blogs. You go to Studio Web's WordPress. It's fine. Just keep it up to date. Make sure you don't have too many fancy plugins in there because that, that could be security risk. Back up your database. If you're good, if you're using a good VPS, good private virtual server, um, what you call it, uh, they will do automatic back backups for you. For example, I'm using uh, the host that's hosting the Studio Web web app and the website. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. They now can back up a server down to the uh, to the hour, apparently. So I can say, uh, back up the server, back up the database, my uh, relational database, which is MySQL. I can tell them, I want you to load the, the state of the database when it was a Saturday morning at 1 a.m. And they're able to go boop and restore that, which is amazing. So, uh, yeah, so I would just make sure that your database database is backed up and make sure you have some really freaky hard to uh, guess passwords. Thanks for giving the thumbs up. We went from 24 to 63. I appreciate that. It's just good for the algorithms because if, if I get good engagement with the live and we get better views, right now the view count on the live videos are lower than my typical pre-recorded videos for whatever reasons. Um, so the more we get thumbs up, the more people share, the more likely I will continue to do this live stuff. One of the big things we're going to be doing with the live is is um, is I going to be doing a lot more of the uh, nerd news I talked about months ago. I think the live format's the best format. I don't know if I'll do it daily or twice a week, three times a week. We'll see. We'll see what the the audience draw is. Right. I'm always weighing like anything else in life. You got to weigh effort versus return. Now, if I spend uh, 30 minutes doing a live broadcast or 50 minutes, like it is many times, I have to say to myself, okay, do 50 minutes and I get how many views for that? Whereas if I record a 10-minute video on a subject, how many views I get? Right now, because we're still working out the details of how to structure these lives, why am I telling you all this, by the way? Because so that you understand how I think about things. So I'm looking at the structure of these lives. I'm working out the details, right? you open with the main, the lead story? Should I go into Q&A right away? Should it be 30 minutes, 50 minutes, 20 minutes, the live? I don't know. Then I weigh that effort versus the views I get versus just coming up with a subject, doing a pre-recorded video. One thing about the pre-recorded videos is I can edit and I can shoot with a much higher quality video. Right now, this video is it's pretty good, the quality. But when I do a pre-record, I can record with the super high-end broadcast quality uh, video and set the lighting up perfectly. So there's pros and cons to everything. I hope that makes sense. Um, let's see. Calisthenics for life. My friend is learning Program 45. Is that a smart move? Why not? Because uh, within a few months or a few months, you can start making money coding. And within a year, you can be making much more money than most professions. So why not do it better late than never? Uh, why WordPress? This day you can use so much framework for building websites. Well, because a lot of people, they just want a uh, an article-driven based system. WordPress has a huge set of uh, 
a huge community out there in terms of uh, f templates and frameworks and functionality and point and click. Is WordPress perfect? No, but it does have certain advantages. What book or tutorial do you recommend for design patterns? Hmm. You know, I have to look into what are the latest ones. I learned design patterns like, you know, literally 20 years ago. Um, so I don't remember what I was looking at. Many books, like, you know, in terms of study, by the way, I would spend back in the 90s uh, three to $4,000 a year buying tech training books. At the time, we did have online video like we do today. Um, and the way I thought about it, given how much money you make as a developer, whether you're doing you know, WordPress sites, freelance, whether you're writing Java or Python, or you're not writing Ruby, um, whatever route you take, if you can improve your abilities by 5% every time you spend 50 bucks on a book or 60 or $70 on a piece of education, it's well worth it given how much money you're gonna make. So I literally was spending three to $4,000 a year on uh, tech books for several years. And I read them and uh, they came in handy, let me tell you. Because it's good to get a perspective from multiple points of view. It's like, uh, you see that with like, um, any, any, in any profession, like when I was learning how to fight, I would train with different schools, different teachers, because every teacher had his, had their thing that they were particularly good at. And so I may take 5% from there and 10% from this and 10% from there, put it together, do my own thing. That's the old Jeet Kune Do Bruce Lee philosophy, by the way, by the way. Uh, is learning design patterns and algorithms important for front-end developers? Algorithms, and, algorithms, not so much, maybe a little tiny bit. Um, des learning design patterns only if you're working uh, with maybe a broader group where you're working with, you're doing, there's a full stack development going on and you're taking care of the front end. It's good to understand uh, the, the crucial design patterns of application development so that you can work more effectively with the programmers. Uh, the most prominent by far is M. VC, model view controller, all the modern frameworks just about are based on that model. MVC was actually developed by, I think it was Smalltalk in the 70s. Um, I don't know, what else do we got? How are we doing now? 145, all right. Uh, I don't know if I answered it. Hey Steph, do you think that Java is going to be the 21st century call ball if you consider its slow evolution, boilerplate code and verbosity? I think it already is to a certain extent, you know, and given that COBOL has been like, uh, you know, in decline for like 30 years now, it's still around, they're still lacking COBOL programmers. That tells you how valuable Java skill sets are going to be for the next 25, 30 years, right? Uh, what else do we got? Uh, this guy's answering a question, so I put it out there so everybody can see. Mm, let's see what we got here. World DJ. Do you think we would see a comeback for C, C++, and web development scene after WebAssembly? I doubt it. I doubt it because, you know, the current set of technologies for web development is really, really powerful. And I don't see how, you know, WebAssembly, I'm not saying it's no good. It's probably good, but I'm just not see thinking that it's going to be... Um, I don't think it's going to have a real world noticeable impact for most types of web apps, but I could be wrong about that. Uh, let's see what we got. Hey, Steph, can I ask a link for your interactive web developer course, please? Yeah, sure. Just go to, um, where can I find that? Just go to uh, studioweb. Go to school.studioweb.com school slash store, and uh, you will uh, find it. If I uh, see, see if I can get that for you guys. Uh, yeah. Give me a second. I'm just grabbing a URL here. Where are you guys? There you go here. There we go. Here it is. I'm going to post the link here. I guess I should do that. Um, I don't know if it's going to come in as a link. Can I do an overlay? You know, I'm going to do an overlay. I've never done an overlay before. All right, we'll see what happens. 
overlay text. Is that a link? All right, display name. All right, how away would you? That show up? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I should have tested. I've never done that before in the software. Uh, so let's see what we got here. Let's go. Angular, React, job is dictate. In my uh, seven laws of code, law number seven is let the market dictate. Uh, <laughs> Hamza Asif's, I don't feel hungry after I eat and I can't see when my eyes are closed. Why is that? <laughs> I don't know, it's a mystery, it's a mystery. Here we go, just so, just in case you want to know where we go. Uh, I see you're a drummer. Which programming book taught you that? There we go. Uh, I had it took several programming books. I lined them all up, and then I bought uh, a pair of brushy drumsticks, and I started playing my drums. All right, saying, oh wow, China, fantastic. Say hello from Shanghai, China. I want to wish you all the best for your next 165 years of coding advice. <laughs> well, thank you very much, and all the best to you. And uh, yeah, that's cool. Hey, Stefan, I love the scarf. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's kind of cool. Uh, what do we got here? I work in IBM Z Systems mainframe department where we serve big clients such as banks, governments, military, police, various funds, et cetera. And man, most of these clients run COBOL. Indeed they do. That's why if you want to be guaranteed a job, COBOL is one option. But you know, just about any programming language these days, you guarantee a job. Uh, depends on where you want to work, really. The type of work you want to do, as I talk about. Uh, it's just, what do you think about Khabib adding rubies to his USC belt after every title defense? If, uh, if the USC is, uh, is okay with that, I guess why not? That's interesting. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, no, I got corona. Um, no, I just need to drink water. All right. Um, what's going on here? I'm late to this combo. Can you give me a break summary of main points so far? You have to watch the replay. We're in, we're in this for 28 minutes almost. You have to watch the replay. Um, what do we got here? Come in. Greetings, sir. Love from the Philippines. I started your full stack course yesterday, and I can really feel your 169 years experience. Just the intro alone, and I love the quizzes. All right. Thanks for uh, letting me know. I'm glad you love it. It's uh, that's a big thing. What I try to do in my courses to, to to inject into the context of the courses, the HTML5, the JavaScript, whatever, Python, Petri, my 169 years of experience. So when you come out of it, you're not just learning how to code and how to build real things, but you you get the benefit of my experience. I hope that makes sense. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, let's see. Hey, Stefan, what do you think about learning game dev and slowly making it your main job as I'm learning game dev on my free time? I'm loving, and I'm loving, I would love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, that's it. That's exactly what you should do. When you want to transition from job A to job B, um, you want to slowly dip your feet into job B so you don't lose connection, you don't lose your stream of, of money. That's job A. This kind of reminds me of a friend of mine. He used to do that when he was he would be dating. I'm not saying it's a good thing to do when you're dating, but he used to do that when he was dating, though. He wouldn't uh, drop the X until he got the... Anyway, it's true. I'm not condoning that behavior. I'm just saying. Uh, Tariq, uh, what is the difference between SQL and PostgreDBS? Well, SQL is a language, and Postgre is a database... Uh, management uh, software, which is an SQL-based management software. Unless you're telling me PostgreDBS is a 
specialized product that is not SQL based. I don't know. But uh, that's as far as I can understand. Yeah, let's we'll see what I'm. Let's see. I'm a big fan of your channel. I got my first programming job and it's more difficult than I was expecting. Quit my past. Quitting has passed my mind. I'm greatly appreciating it. Thank you. Don't give up. Don't give up. The first uh, couple months, first few months, is going to be difficult. Uh, trust me. Uh, I talked about that. You're hitting that wall. You got to just struggle through that wall. Get over it because once you get past it, it becomes much easier. Uh, don't give up. Just take a deep breath, relax, realize, you just keep working at it consistently, it will come to you. It's well worth it because the hardest job to get is the first job. It's like fighting. The first fight that you get into, the first time you step in the ring and you put on the gloves, it's the hardest fight, trust me. But then it gets easier and easier and easier and easier, and then it becomes a lot of fun. Next thing you know, you're, you're, you're fighting like crazy. Same thing with coding. You just got to give yourself uh, some time, take a deep breath, proceed slowly, okay? Uh, don't give up. Don't give up. Stefan, how many months I need good learning HTML, CSS, JavaScript to get a job? You could, I've had several people, with my courses anyway, say they were able to get a job within uh, 30, 45 days, entry level. Beginners, they follow my guidance. Um, I actually, somebody wrote, and I think some of you may have seen it on YouTube, he was saying that, he had no prior coding background. He did, he did my studio web, uh, web stack courses, and he was able to get a job beating out people who had a computer science degree because of what it is I teach in the system. Um, can I feel your advice to focus one thing and master that? I have been moderate programmer for a long time, but now, but but now I focus, I assume it's now I focus, but now I focus to full stack JavaScript stack, React Express to get me to the next level. Yeah, you do your foundations and then you, so you kind of figure out what you like. And once you figure out what you like, then you concentrate on that and you get really good at that and it's going to raise the game. So let's say you continue with Re React and uh, Express, get deep into it, start understanding uh, design patterns, understanding re code refactoring, Get that Martin Fowler book. Um, I'll put a link after the broadcast. Come back here. I'll put it in the uh, footnotes. Fantastic book to learn in terms of how to write clean code and how to really do a good job at that. And then that level of skill will translate across um, any type of programming that you do. So I, I told that story. It happened to me with martial arts. I've done many martial arts for many years. This is a short version of the story. Then one of my teachers pulled me aside, Steph, you got to concentrate on one style, get really good at it, and raise your game across the board. I didn't quite understand it at the time, but because I knew this guy was really good, I took the leap of faith, did what he told me, and sure enough, uh, within a short period of time, just by concentrating on one style, I became super good, uh, well, much better uh, at everything because my skill level just went right up. So, yeah, that's a uh, way to go. Uh, there we go. Kennedy. Greetings from Kenya. Greetings. Hint on CD, CI processes at Studio Web. I, how do you deploy to production? Which CI tools do you use? Um, we're, uh, we're on GitHub, and we push to GitHub. And uh, that's the extent of what I can talk about, I think. But uh, yeah, we don't do anything uh, super special. We're PHP Laravel with GitHub. We push that way. We use keys. Uh, to make sure that everything's super secure, so it's not password dependent, it's key dependent. Uh, do you believe HTML CSS is, is enough to land a job in a company, or should you expand your skills first? You gotta look at the company, you gotta look at the company, see what they're looking for. If you're doing HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, that's, uh, you're better, you're probably more likely to get like a little freelancer job maybe, work for small business. If you want to expand, you have to look, see what they may want React, they may want uh, uh, PHP Laravel, backend skills, you know. I always say go full stack if you're getting into it. Going full stack, even if you don't end up doing full stack, let's say you learn a full stack, as I suggest, and you decide, well, I don't want to be a full stack person, I want to do a front end with React or Vue or whatever. Um, and you end up doing that. But being a full stack developer will make you a much better React uh, for front end developer because you understand the whole process. I hope that makes sense. 
Stefan, what do you think about physical parents as a freelancer? Is there a difference? And if, what would be more beneficial, more, be, more beneficial to dress professional or keep semi-casual? Depends where you're going, right? You got to know your client. If you're going to go do a job for a legal firm, you probably want to go in there a little bit more professional. You don't want to wear a suit and tie because, I don't know, I don't trust developers who wear suit and ties, you know? Um, you think of like, you know, Zuckerberg and Steve Jobs, and, you know, they kind of helped set the standard, even Bill Gates, you know, uh, back in the day. So, yeah, you want to, uh, I would lean towards semi-casual overall, you know, for sure. And whatever you do, don't smell. That's a joke. That's a joke. No, don't smell. I'm not saying you smell. Anyway, uh, Stefan, how is Vue.js going for you guys? Uh, we like it. Not a problem. Fantastic. We, I'd let you know if we found it was problematic. Although I don't believe or if we've leveraged it to nearly its full potential at this point in time. We plan on doing that uh, at some future point. Uh, do you need algorithms for front-end development? Very little. Very little. Uh, uh, Mr. Polsky, JS is not heavily used in most sites. Example, a simple bakery site, but still it has a huge demand in market. Why is that? Um, it depends on the type of stuff that you're doing, you know. Um, yeah, for many sites, it's not crucial, but you have a, a small subset where they're using heavy use of JS. So it depends on the situation. Uh, all right, all right, what's else going on? Steph, you are a developer. What is your job? My job is to own the business. And uh, so what does that mean? It means I came up with the concept of the business. I architected the first iteration of Studio Web, my training app, which is used by a bunch of schools. And uh, and then I worked with you know setting up the marketing and setting up the uh, uh, you know just deploying to the first schools, managing the, uh, the relationships with the schools, and managing the development team and the developers, uh, making decisions about which uh, features to implement, what not to implement, uh, making sure the code was clean, et cetera, et cetera. So it's like. My hands are in a bunch of different places. I'm, I'm, I was deeply involved in the, the design aesthetic in terms of the color space, the, the color scheme, and uh, the usability. So I spent a lot of time looking over uh, UX because it's such an important aspect of, uh, of uh, development these days. UX is huge. That's user experience. Um, you can get away with badly written backend code, especially for when you're first starting up, but you can't get away with with bad UX, you know, you can't get away with bad UX. Stefan's job is to promote, to promote is to promote Ruby to us, one hundred percent. That is my number one goal in life. Uh, is PHP, HTML, CSS, and JS is necessary for data analysts? I don't know. I'm not a data analyst. I would say no. You're probably uh, better off with Python in that situation, but that's just a guess. Uh, Java without a degree, possible, yes, but more difficult because most people who use bat Java are larger organizations. And simply because of HR departments, there's going to be restrictions in that regards. Uh, <laughs> Kalinsky, what do we got here? 164, oh, not bad. Hey, 100 likes, that's not bad. One dislike. Get off the stream now. I'm just joking. Stay on the stream. Give me another. You like, you hate me with that dislike. Give me another thumbs down to show me how much you hate me. Uh, same person, though. Uh, what else do we got? Hey, it's magic. We'll see what magic has to say. Stefan, do you think SQLI is viable? a viable database for a small, medium-sized website having a few users with right access? Do you use it on projects before? Did you use it on projects before? I've never used SQL Lite. SQL Lite, um, a lot of people you can just. I would not use. I think I think it's PHP specific, right? If I recall, I'm sure you could use it with other languages. I just never used it simply because why not just use MySQL, right? Why not just take that that extra level there and uh, use MySQL and uh, you know, you know what I mean? So this way, it's not much extra effort to use MySQL. 
And as such, you will be able to um, scale up much more easily. Just in case, for some reason, your site happens to go beyond the, the limitations of SQLite, you'll be able to just, you won't have to switch over. You know what I mean? Uh, Steph, why do you wear a scarf? I have uh, my windows open and it's kind of cold out there and I'm just getting fresh air into the uh, room. All right, let's see what we got here. What is the difference between your courses on Studio Web and Need to Nerd? Need to Nerd is just my, um, it's just a newsletter. And I launched that newsletter and uh, I haven't put them out in a little while, in a few weeks now, I just caught up with other things. Um, so they're not different, they're not different. Studio Web is the actual, uh, just go to studioweb.com, you can learn all about it. We have uh, uh, material for schools, law schools, and um, uh, we also for individuals as well. Uh, yeah. Uh, though working with frameworks, I can learn core language through working with frameworks. No, 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 no. You learn core language first, then you learn frameworks. Otherwise, you're going to be pulling your hair out. See, I tried to do that, and I pulled all my hair out. Look what happened to me. All right, Steph, how do I get a job? You learn to code, put up a good site, dress well, start reaching out to people, talking to them, and uh, yeah, there you go. Hi, right, someone need a coffee or some cold, by the way? I'm not sure what's that. I'm going to go get a coffee after I'm done with you guys live streaming here. What I might do is after I'm live streaming here, I might go get a coffee and then I'm going to go live stream uh, from Instagram. So you can join my Instagram. Uh, okay, what do we got here? I work in a field of computational geometry full of mathematics and it's all written in C++ for performance concerns. We still didn't see a desktop app like AutoCAD package deploying fully on the web. Okay. Uh, all right. Are you, is there a question in that or is that a statement of fact? That's an area of uh, uh, software development I'm not too uh, aware of. Uh, what do we got here? Full stack HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, and I'm, uh, oh, that's all in a language I do not understand. So we'll, we'll get out. Uh, right, so here's a good question. Where are we at? We're at 40 minutes, so I'm going to be winding this down very soon. Steph, when do I know I'm ready to apply for jobs? You should be comfortable, comfortable with the fundamentals. So we're going to talk web stack. And uh, so what I would do, uh, Um, sorry, I just got distracted by comments there. Uh, when do you know when you're ready to apply for jobs? You do your foundation, so if you're doing web stack, you know how to build a basic website, you understand HTML, CSS, JavaScript, you understand how to deploy. Uh, I would understand also the back end as well, even if your goal is not to be a back end developer. You just feel comfortable being able to put up your basic website. Uh, you understand the landscape. I think that, I hope that makes sense. I'm actually going to be releasing some new um, uh, content that will help you with that very soon. All right. Uh, I'm not going to answer that. Let's see if I can answer this one. I started web development, and it seems it's taking much time to get out of tutorial hell. But I'm just innocently trying to be the best in writing code. What do you suggest? You got to write real world code, dude. You got to write real world code. You have to get out there and do the real thing. You're never going to learn to fight unless you fight. You're never going to learn to code unless you code for real. So uh, go code. That's my suggestion to you. Uh, as a student, we can't stick with one tech because new semester brings new languages, new tech. Things we learned in six months kind of goes wasted because of out of practice. What to do? Help. While you're in school, follow the program. So you uh, finish the program and get your degree because I assume that's what you're looking for. You can code on the side. But remember, whether you're writing Java object-oriented code or you're writing Python object-oriented code, object-oriented code, you're still writing object-oriented code. Whether you're writing you know, um, JavaScript functions, 
or PHP functions, you're still writing functions, right? So the point being is that it's not like it's lost. If you go from Java or from C++ to Java, it's not like you lose, you lost out on your C++. That C++ training initially will give you the foundations to make learning Java easier or whatever. Learning JavaScript and then moving on to Python will make your, it will give you a foundation to make learning uh, Python easier. I hope that makes sense. All right, what do we got here? Steph, I feel comfortable with what you said. My goal is to become a front-end developer, but can you tell me how do I stand out with no experience among other people with experience with CS degrees? I talk about that. I got to put that in my um, set of video FAQs. You uh, get your foundations. You put up a nice website representing your skill sets. Reach out to local small business. Do a couple of little gigs for them. Uh, so you develop that experience working on real projects, put that out on your resume site, then reach out with that experience. Trust me, uh, prospective employers value real world experience over just about anything else. All right. Hi, Stefan, what tools do you recommend for mocking up screens and describing functionality to clients? You know, I used to actually do it on paper and pen. At one point, I used to do it with like a visual code editor, you said, you know, where you could just draw your your uh, page elements pretty easily. So you could use like a web flow or something like that to do something quick. Um, I actually just use my iPad with the pencil, and I draw I draw out the boxes and screens. I like doing that because it's much faster than pen and paper, and because I can send them a PDF of the drawings I've done for them, and they can comment on it. So that's what I do. But uh, there's all these different ways you can approach it. Some people still use like UML apparently to do that kind of stuff. Uh, there we go. What else we got? The title of the stream is WordPress to Web Design. I'm not new to coding, but I am not current either. How do I move forward and make something of this, namely uh, WordPress or WordPress front end? Well, yeah, I, I covered it briefly. Uh, you're gonna have to look earlier on. Um, what uh, I suggest you, again, I, people know my stuff, know what I'm going to say. You learn your fundamentals, and then you uh, you learn your fundamentals, and then you, you proceed to actually build something, then pick up WordPress, you know, install it, learn it, play with it. Everything stems from just getting your fundamentals down. I was checking your mentoring program, Need to Nerd. Does it include the courses on Studio Web? Yes, the mentoring program includes all the Studio Web courses, all of them, plus the soon to come out certifications, uh, plus access to the private group, plus uh, if you get the, you get the uh, level, you get direct access to me consultations. Uh, it's a small group. I'm, I haven't advertised it much. Uh, because I, I want to keep it relatively small and grow it slowly to make sure that everybody gets uh, uh, the attention that they deserve with that. Uh, here's a good question. What are the most important design patterns in web for web developers? So design patterns is just a preset way that programmers have decided uh, makes sense. So I can say, use this design pattern. You go, oh, okay, I know what you want me to do. So you write the code according to that pattern. Think of like a cookie cutter, like a pattern. Um, so the most important by far is MVC, Model View Controller. That is the most important design pattern by far for web development, I would argue. Then from there, you can it's all kinds of different directions you go. My favorite design pattern besides MVC was um, uh, decorators. That's uh, expressed in uh, server filters in Java. Uh, it's kind of dependency injection as a decorator. Those are my two favorites personally, but uh, MVC is what you want to learn first and foremost. Why is algorithm such a big topic? For me, I never took any course or relay. I just type the logic on paper and follow it. Yeah, you know, it's, 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 it stems from academics. Um, they get caught up in that. Um, this idea that algorithms are important. Why? Because they can, it's just easy for them to sort of put out little algorithmic uh, lessons and little you know, tutorials and games around it. It's like kind of like training wheels. Algorithms are used in certain contexts, 
but for most commercial development, it's very rarely used or it's already been figured out. So you just plug in a library and that's all been done for you. Um, so it's overemphasized, in my opinion, in most types of programming. Not all. If you're getting into AI, machine learning, there's probably a lot of math and algorithm work on that end. But from my experience over the last two plus decades, writing business apps, algorithms, you know, it's, it's just basic stuff, you know. Steph, our coding exercises, our coding exercises help to improve algorithms. Thank you. Uh, as I said, it's uh, the complexity in software development. It's not algorithms most of the time, like 99% of the time. Most of the time, the complexity in software development is architecture. It's architecture and uh, best coding practices and implementing the right design patterns uh, as you write your app. Um, what is your favorite backend book? Uh, Martin Fowler. Uh, it's uh, refactoring, it's called. I'll put a link in the stream after this goes public. That's my favorite. All right, so many questions, so many questions. I'm going to have to, you're going to have to save them for next time uh, because uh, what time is it? It's 51 minutes. I've done my limit. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the stream. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me two thumbs down. And we will see you in the uh, next. Um, in the next live broadcast. All right. I'll give you a, eh, okay, that's it. We'll talk soon.